Room Cinéma, ce mois-ci, je reçois le réalisateur oscarisé Hugh Hudson. Monsieur, bonjour. Welcome. Avec Ridley Scott ou Alan Parker, Hudson fait partie de ces réalisateurs anglais qui ont durablement marqué le cinéma et ce dès la fin des années 70. Formés à la pub dont ils bouleversent les codes, ils imposent alors une toute nouvelle esthétique au 7e art. Les chariots de feu et le film qui révèle Hugh Hudson, un succès immédiat et qui doit aussi beaucoup à l'utilisation de la musique de Vangelis, un pari osé à l'époque. Devenu du jour au lendemain incontournable pour Hollywood, il connaîtra pourtant une spectaculaire descente aux enfers avec son troisième long métrage, Révolution. Comment s'est-il retrouvé dans cette situation malgré le soutien indéfectible de sa star, Al Pacino, et comment a-t-il rebondi après cet échec retentissant Allez hop, home cinéma, c'est parti euh, Monsieur Hudson, euh, euh, ben, je suis bien bien content de vous recevoir dans cette, dans cette émission. Vous êtes le réalisateur de Chariot, euh, Chariot of Fire, Angry Stoke, vous êtes principalement connu pour ces deux grands films. Et euh, je voulais savoir, en fond, euh, comment vous êtes venu en cinéma Um, when I was uh, nine, nine ans, um, in England, and uh, this is uh, just after the war, 1945-46, the government said to parents, any any child o over uh, over ten should be taken to see to the cinema, local cinema, where they were showing the footage from Belson and Dachau, taken by the British Army when they relieved the camps yes. to show why the, we, we fought the war. And everybody should see this, including children, because they will remember and will never forget it. And it was such an impact on me to see these images, to see what cinema could do, if you like, what f filming would do, and the horror of it. I was very marked by it. And then afterwards, I went to boarding school, to um, Pensionnaire, mm -hmm. Uh, near London, and I started to go to the cinema, and mo mainly it was American films and a few British films. Um, and I thought this was a fantastic thing to do. So the, the combination of these two things, um, the first film I see in my life, which is at the age of nine, and then all this stuff wanted me to go into the cinema. Uh, at the 58, I came out of the army, and uh, I tried to go into, in, in, into a cinema company, and nobody wanted me. Why? They didn't. They don't. They were very nepotistic. Too young or...? No, too nepotistic in England. Good to try it. Tried all the studios, rank, Associated British, and then American companies had, off had, had companies in London, MGM. Had. I tried all the studios. Um, no, they weren't interested. Maybe because I came from a, a different class. I came from an upper class. So maybe that was the reason, because... On the whole, people who went into films in, as stagiaires were, um, were from the same class, and usually uh, sons or nephews of people who were already. That's how it was. So at that time, television advertising was beginning, and I went into an advertising agency. Mm -hmm. I didn't like that at all. I was there for six months, and I decided to go to Paris. You hey, lived there for a while, no? I lived in Paris for three, four years. I worked with in a, a documentary film company in, uh, in the editing department. First of all, in negative, in the negative, in the, in the laboratories at Eclair, and learning how to, ab about film, really, how film was processed, what, etc., etc. When, when I left Paris, mm -hmm. left the editing, I then came back to London and started my, my company as a producer. As a producer of what? Of, of TV uh, show? documentary. Documentary. Yeah. That's why you made you made uh, a Fanjo. No, I made two or three films yeah. before Fanjo. I wasn't really interested in motor racing, but Fanjo was an extraordinary man, wonderful man. I got to know him, and then we made a film. It took me a year to make the film, all over the world. What brings you to Chariot of Fire? Because uh, what brings you there? The, the God came to me first. I knew the producer very well because I worked with Alan Parker. Who, yeah. Now I got to this know by work. now. I know Alan Parker, Ridley Scott, of course, uh, Tony Scott, yes. uh, Adrian Lyon, and myself. Were five But, of us. Alan Parker, uh, Ridley Scott, et, et Tony Scott, qui, qui est mort il y a quelques années malheureusement. C'est tout un groupe 
tout un groupe de... We were called the Famous Five. Yes, that's a, that's a very famous English director And from we the were 80s. a hand, a hand of change. About a Chariot of Fire, Uh, so you you had that script, you received that script, and you say, okay, I'm going to do no, that I movie. I didn't receive the script. I received 25 pages oh. of the idea. just liked the two characters. It was about the two characters. And I thought it would be an unusual film because uh, very rare um, that you have uh, two characters running through a film who never meet. No. Two stories parallel. And if that's the reason Hollywood said, no, we don't want this. This is rubbish. You know, it's a beautiful story, a beautiful story of faith and belief, standing up for your beliefs against all, all the forces that try to stop you. was a big, big hit. Movie was the movie very popular. was so popular at the time. Also because, it, of course, there is the, 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 it's a great movie, but you had a fantastic music, and everybody knows that music. Vangelis yeah. is very, music very, very popular. important to the film. Yes. Vangelis is an old friend of mine. I meet in Paris, first of all. A good friend. I got on very well with Vangelis. And uh, I was making documentaries mm -hmm. and advertising in Paris, and he used to work with a man called Frederic Rossif, Uh, he made documentaries on animals. He also made a film called Amuria Madrid, which won an Oscar for best documentary mm -hmm. about the Spanish Civil War. And uh, he was a fantastic man, and he used Vangelis for, for these animal films. And I got to know him because I worked for Rossif's company called Tele Hachette. And I got to know Vangelis, and I started to use him. This was way, way before Charis Safar. And when Charis Safar came along, I thought, you've got to have something different. Yeah. You, you can't have music that's, of, that, of 1920s. That's because great. It would disappear and become just a television mm -hmm. documentary or semi-documentary about uh, the Olympics of 1924 in Paris. You have to have something different. And I thought, I thought of Van Gennis. I'd already uh, uh, given Van Gennis's work in discs before, it was before, um, before CDs. I gave it in, in discs. To, um, to Alan Parker yeah. from Midnight Express. He yeah. said, you must try him, try Van Gillis. This is because I was second unit mm -hmm. on, um, on uh, Midnight, Midnight Express. Express. And uh, they were looking for, and they, he edited uh, Midnight Express uh, to Van Gillis, his mm -hmm. tracks from old, old records. Um, but they didn't use him because Giorgio Morodo. Yeah, it's great too. Also good. Uh, great, great was working soundtrack. for Casablanca, was under contract at Casablanca, and they were the producers mm -hmm. of Midnight Express. It's it been massive. No, when, when the movie gets out. Yeah, it was massive. Although, of course, the record, uh, the, the theme tune became number one in America and everywhere. It played in elevators everywhere. You know, every shop was playing it at the time of the film coming out. The film was very well timed. Four Oscars, no? Four Oscars, yeah. yeah. Best film. Not bad, no? Not best director, though. Best yeah, well, film. you know. Warren Beatty <laughs> won the best for, director. For which, which one? For Reds. Oh, yeah, well. You are at the top of the world with Chariot of Fire. And then you, you became your own producer. And you... I became my own producer because uh, my producer of Chariot of Fire, David Putnam, yes. walked out of Great Why? Stoke. Oh, he walked out? He didn't Why? want to be producer of, of my next film. Why? I was furious with him because he was a good partner. He was a very good partner. Why did he leave? Because I had too much power by then. Because Hollywood talked to me, the studio, Warner Brothers. Uh, they started talking to me direct. He didn't like that. He lost his control.
book is a very good, very interesting, very popular book and very interesting. Nobody's ever made that book. F 25 films of Tarzan, a, a, a modern myth, yeah. Tarzan, comic book myth in a way. Um, nobody's made the, uh, the real story. It's so good, the real story. The movie is fantastic and there is a great modernity in the movie. You can watch the movie, you, you can release the movie today. and. It's also because of the, the great cinematography. Uh, John, Al John Alcott, Alcott, who's been, who's been a Kubrick, Kubrick uh, DOP. He did um, Clockwork Orange. Yes, of course. And he was a good friend of mine, John. He was always working on my commercials. <laughs> Why, why brings you to Christophe Lambert? Because I, I'm sure at that time you have the, you have the possibility of any actor of the oh, world. Oh, you know, we had... Uh, I, what happened was quite interesting because that was the fight with Warner Brothers. Why are you using this strange Frenchman? Uh, why? Well, he's Swiss, actually, but, uh, you know, yeah, why? Why? Because why? Of, he, of his eyes? His eyes were very interesting because yes. he's me up. Mm -hmm. he, and so he, when he eyes off, he can't really see you. Yeah. He looks beyond. He looks beyond Just you. Just like James Dean? I don't know. Yeah, James Dean was completely well, out. If that's one of the reasons. He had a, a strange look beyond, beyond the lens. He was very uh, bad physically, unattractive physically. So he had to go through training for four months. I mean, real training. We had to, we have to, we forbade him to go to Paris because he lived in Paris because he would go at weekends, start eating and fucking and that kind of thing. Uh, we, we stopped him going in the end. I said, if you go again to Paris, you can go once a month, but not every weekend. Because if you go, if you keep going, you're out. We'll get somebody else because you're, you're, not, you're not delivering what we need. We need proper body, yeah. like Johnny Weissmuller, who had a beautiful body. We tested five people, or one of them was Vigo Mortensen. Yeah. We tested him, all of them. But I should, maybe I should have taken Vigo, because uh, he's a very fine actor. Um, well, and he wasn't well known, Vigo Mortensen, then. It would have been the same thing as Christopher. But it was Christopher who I said. But you had the power to decide yes, that. I did. In the end, I said, look, boy, man, guys, for me, the only person is possible is Christopher Lambert. You do, Christopher. You, you agree to me with me. In fact, they agree, and then they agreed. They were spending $30 million. That's a lot. 30. So I go from a $5 million film to a $30 million. That's a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. And they asked me to produce it, too. They wouldn't let me have a producer. Well, I couldn't find a producer. That was tough to have to do that and direct this epic film with apes, you know, 30 apes. Yeah, there is no CGI at a time. No, no. Not one footage. Yeah. There, there are a few shots of, of at the beginning yeah. by Albert Whitlock, who was, used to do all the, all the, the matte paintings for, for Hitchcock. That, that's the only f trick in the film. The rest is all real. That was so interesting. And that's why it's good, I think. If you look at the Tarzan today, the most recent Tarzan, uh, where every single ape is CGI, all the furs and all that. We made the furs. We had a factory building skins. Every skin of every ape is sewn by hand. So, has. So they're real. It's amazing work. They're real. And it was amazing. Rick Baker was a master. Yeah, yeah. A master. Still is. He still is a master. He really is. He, Grace Stokes' success is due to him. Really, like Charis of is due to Vangelis. That's the technician. For for your next movie, the big, the biggest movie, I, I think your masterpiece. But your ah, 
Uh, but for me, it's my masterpiece. Yeah, you, for you, Al Pacino, it's our masterpiece. No, but you, you can, you can, you can. Revolution. Be, you, of course. Revolution was out of time. It was Ronald Reagan's era. Yeah. And the heroes of the, the movie heroes, who were they? Schwarzenegger yeah. and Stallone. Who wanted to make the movie? By Stallone the way. wanted to make the movie. We turned it well, because Erwin Winkler is a good, good friend. Obviously, he rang up Erwin Winkler, and I said, No, not Stallone. We don't want that. We want somebody who's a who's a gutsy front man from the from the streets. Yeah. We wanted Al Pacino. So I went over to America and met Al Pacino, spent three weeks with him, trying to persuade him to do it. In the end, I persuaded him. He was at the height of his career. He was a, I got on very well with him immediately. Immediately. Because he's completely the opposite to me. You know, he comes from very poor background. Mm -hmm. I came from a pretty rich background, yes. if you like, well-educated. He's completely the reverse. But we got on, like, beautifully. He's still a very old, good friend of mine. Yeah, here's your five bob back. It was a mistake here. Oh. Where do you think you're going, mister? Step back here at once! What do you think you're doing? I was in the commissary. I come out, I found out he joined. See? That's right. But it's a mistake. He ain't joined. Is this a mistake, See, Corporal I don't Spencer? Five, five. I recognize the boy. Show him the roll book. Top of the list. I know his name. I'm his pa. I told you he ain't joined. Yes, no. he has. No, he ain't had my permission. Makes he's no signed. difference. He no. received the five shillings no. and he signed his name. Right yeah, here. You just cross his name off with that quill there, see? Then it never happened. Come on. Detain that man! Oh, Hold him there! Oh, it's it's Revolution. Every single shot is camera -ama. Not that I'm the first person to use camera -ama. Yeah, just like yeah. Paul Greengrass uh, uh, today, you know? He's... Well, yeah, like everybody today using handheld. Uh, I'm not saying I'm the first person to use handheld. No, ever. no. I, I think I think even you, Griffiths use handheld. Yes, but in a in a in a very huge production like that, because of oh. course the Nouvelle Vague did, you know, with of very course, of course. Uh, small movie, but yeah, in a big big context like that, historical movie, yeah, classical. I wanted to do yeah. it like that because it's about a man from the gutter, just like a documentary. Yeah, like a documentary. He's a man from the street yeah. who didn't want to be part of the war, didn't want anything to do with politics. But because his son is taken by the, by the, by the army to, be, to enlist it, he has to go. He has to find a cause. He has to find a, a, a way for him to be. So he changes, and that's a, that's a story. Sign on the line. You bastard. And you watch your language too, mister. Good. Hey, Mr. Dobbs. Here's your five shillings. You are now a member of the United States Army! There is something I've read about it, and I would love to know if it's true. It's the competition with mission. I heard that uh, mission, yeah. mission and revolution had a great competition between, and when mission wins the Palme d'Or in, in Cannes, it destroys completely uh, revolution. Well, revolution already out. Why? Because I believe, I believe the problem was David Putnam the producer of Chariots of Fire. He produced the mission, one of them. Oh. So you think there is a kind of a revenge or something? Destroying? Something, something. Destroying your Sacrifice a revolution. We don't want revolution to be successful. This is in David Putnam's head. The problem was Erwin Winkler, the producer of revolution, didn't stand up for the film. He didn't care. He was making Rocky Eight yes. and other films and he was having problems because I was going over budget. Mission was going over budget as well. Mission by Roland Joffé, aren't you? Just yeah, Roland really yeah, Joffé, yeah. yeah. It's a good film. Yeah, it is. With, with, it's, it's strange that we have Pacino and Robert, yeah, yeah. Robert we De Niro. were fighting each other. And I believe that Putnam allowed it to sacrifice. He was on the board of directors of Goldcrest. He was one of the partners of Goldcrest. So he was manipulating the situation to allow not to have mission go out first, to get, get revolution out. Oh, if it's successful, great, good for the company. But if it's... It wasn't finished film. It was unfinished. That's insane. Well, of course. Well, film which only began shooting in April of the same year, and film of that size began shooting in April, 
with terrible weather, terrible problems. Well, that happens in every film. However, from April, May, June, we were still shooting in May and June, and we had to bring it out within four months, five months. Not possible. reception was so, just like the movie didn't exist. No, absolutely. It must, it, he it, was it, attacked on every level. Pacino didn't work for four years yeah. because of it. He was at the height of his career. He was, a, he had only just finished Godfather 2. He was at the height. And he was a wonderful man. I got on very well with Pacino. And we had a good film in the making. And it was badly handled. There was a great scene with him, you know. The, the, the scene uh, with the kid? The kid is oh, fantastic. Yeah. It's, oh, uh, there was some, some astonishing scene. So, if it had been handled properly and not brought out so fast, finished properly, it would have been ready for Cannes. They would have loved it in Cannes, that film. They would have loved it. I would I love never, to. I never told this story about the producers. No, but that's great. You can put it on. I don't care anymore. You know, why would I care? What, ha what happened for but you it, after that? Well, what, what happened? disaster. Well, I just went, I went back and made documentaries. Uh, and then I made another film. I've been through a series of disasters. I made a film with uh, Adam Horowitz. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the Beastie um, Boys. The, yes. Great guy. First film he's ever done, only film. To Los the, Angeles. No. Los Angeles. That was made for Orion. The week the film came out, was about to come out, Orion go bankrupt go into chapter 11 in America, it's called chapter 11. They go bankrupt. So the film has no life. So I'm full of that. Great highs, great lows. But that's what it's about. Isn't life like that? I would love to mention, to talk a little bit briefly about your last movie, Altamira, because you made that movie in Spain with a Spain crew. Yeah, a very nice company called and, Morena. And very good people. But the movie is shot in English. Why yeah. you do that? I didn't. They wanted it. And I like the idea, because I think the cave paintings are remarkable. They're early cinema, you know, way before cinema. But they're, they're, they're entertainment. You could, you could argue that cave paintings are to do with entertainment, or to do with what... Painted at night, in, 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 painted in the, in the dark of winter. Maybe, maybe that's entertainment. Quelqu'un s'y connaît dans la région, en chambre à air, des railleurs, c'est bien moi. Raoul Taburin. Bonne journée, Raoul Ma réputation est telle qu'on ne dit plus un vélo, mais un Taburin. Et pourtant, je n'ai jamais su monter un vélo. Et mon drame, c'est que jamais personne ne m'a cru. Non, non, bougez pas. Je m'appelle Hervé Chigougne, je suis photographe. Notre complicité fut immédiate. Vous ne savez pas faire de vélo Nous étions comme deux vieux amis d'enfance. À l'affiche ce mois-ci, adapté de la bande dessinée de Sampé, le dessinateur du petit Nicolas, Raoul Taburin, c'est l'histoire d'un petit garçon devenu grand sans savoir faire du vélo, d'une belle amitié mais aussi d'une tendre imposture. Coproduit par BTV et réalisé par Pierre Godot, cette comédie réunit à l'écran Benoît Poulvorde et Édouard Baer. Alors, ça raconte quoi Tout ce qui nous est arrivé depuis 5 ans. Votre mari, il a eu quoi comme problème Un accident. Frédéric voilà. s'est réveillé aveugle. Je cherche un papier vert. Une feuille verte. Voilà. Mmh, ça sent le bouffort. La, la plus grosse difficulté, c'est que quand vous faites un envoyant, c'est que tout le monde regarde vos yeux pour voir à quel moment vous allez avoir une faille. Ou vous allez faire un, un truc qui va vous trahir. Non, non, c'est la dame qui s'en Non, mais qu'est-ce qu'il raconte Ah bah si, ça sent pas la poire, ça sent le fromage. En tout cas, il a pas perdu l'appétit. Hein. Il est devenu obsédé par la bouche. C'est quoi C'est quoi, j'en veux C'est quoi C'est quoi C'est des Maltesers À vous, les Maltesers. Comme j'ai eu un choc en, en moto, en fait, je parle toujours un peu plus fort que les autres et je n'ai pas de filtre. Et le danger, c'est bah, de surjouer, d'être au-dessus de la norme. C'est quoi, c'est quoi C'est mon gradia, papa. Ça se mange pas. Ah, c'est nul. Moi, je n'essaie pas de faire rire. C'est la situation qui fait rire parce que, voilà, quand j'ai faim, j'ai réellement faim. Et j'ai besoin de récupérer un truc à bouffer parce que j'ai l'impression que je n'ai pas mangé depuis des mois. Mais non, mais Fred, qu'est-ce que tu fais Rends le hamburger au monsieur. Mais cette virulence peut faire euh, capoter le film dans quelque chose de, de, de... un peu excessif. Ouais. Ça, c'est du Whopper. 
c'est fondamental sur un film mmh. choral, c'est-à-dire que vous ne pouvez pas avoir un, un comédien ou une comédienne euh, chiant. Vraiment, c'est impossible. Vous pouvez, autant sur un huis clos, vous pouvez vous consacrer à votre comédien, vous pouvez le faire, mais sur un truc comme ça, ce serait suicidaire. Vous parlez de vos amis dans le livre, vous leur avez fait dire avant Pas encore, mais ça va leur plaire. Enfin, s'ils te reconnaissent. Oh, je me souvenais pas de ça. Mais c'est vrai, quoi, on y est, on est avec elle. C'est un livre, oui. Je rêve. Mais ça, vas-y, tu vas voir. Je suis tout fente. T'en sais rien, là. T'en sais rien mais, Fabrice, ça fait 20 ans qu'on vit ensemble. T'as bien une petite idée, non La parution du livre est vraiment la goutte d'eau qui fait que ça, fait tout, ça déclenche tout. Si mon livre vous a fait de la peine, je suis désolée. Ce que je voulais écrire, c'est que sans vous, je t'adore, sans les enfants, j'aurais jamais tenu. Elle raconte un petit peu les amis comme ça, mais peut-être qu'elle n'a pas fait beaucoup de remerciements dans son, dans son livre. C'est ce qu'on va lui reprocher. Alors que, évidemment, pour elle, ça paraissait naturel que quand elle parlait de ses amis, c'était comme si c'était un remerciement. Sauf que pour les autres, c'est pas assez fort. Bah, tu sais, elle a peut-être rajouté des personnages, hein, vu la liberté qu'elle prend avec la réalité. Chacun regarde ses petits trucs à soi. C'est euh, presque un peu mesquin, comme c'est écrit. C'est un, un peu plus dur à avaler. En l'occurrence, tout, euh, tout est vrai. Même le saut à l'élastique que je pratiquais. Enfin, euh, avant de te faire casser. Euh, avant de me faire chauffer. C'est moi qui le fais, hein, c'est moi qui le fais. Hein. Eh, oui, oui, je te dirai, je te dirai. Maintenant Non, je te dirai, je te dis. Ok, Jean-Luc, quand tu le sens. Maintenant, Maintenant. Non, non Attends, attends, attends ah Mais pourquoi on fait ça avant de nous cause qu'on est con I'm back, beef. La 37e édition du BIF, le Bruxelles International Fantastic Film Festival, se tiendra du 9 au 21 avril à Beaux-Arts. Cette année encore, près d'une centaine de films de genre seront projetés, dont une trentaine en avant-première. Entre les productions internationales comme le nouveau Nel Jordan Greta avec Isabelle Huppert, on trouvera pas moins de 9 longs métrages belges ou coproduits par la Belgique. Côté ambiance, le 13 avril au soir, les candidats à la première Zombie Run s'élanceront dans une course à travers un Bruxelles apocalyptique en espérant échapper aux zombies affamés. Le bif accueillera des invités cultes et quelques grosses cartouches au nom encore tenu secret. La réservation étant ouverte, précipitez-vous sur le site www.bif.net. Venez. What, what makes you continue fighting for making movies? I can't do anything else. It, it's a wonderful... It's an addiction. No. Yeah, it is. Like it's a drug, of course. It's a, a very interesting thing to do. It's a very interesting art form. Art for, whether it's art, I don't know. But a very interesting form of expression. I was, uh, I was very happy to meet you, and I wish you, uh, I wish you great films to come. Two at least. Two. Deal. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hudson. Pleasure. Voilà, cette émission est terminée. Merci. On se retrouve le mois prochain pour une nouvelle émission. En attendant, vous pouvez revoir cette émission sur le site de BTV. Salut.